it. Strike a pose, strike a pose. <laughs> This week on Science with Steph, I attended the Glasgow Makers Fair. This was an amazing opportunity to see small makers from all across Scotland make technology, fun, exciting robots, fun, exciting things for the whole family to see. I was absolutely astounded at what people could make out of very little resources or budget. Um, there was lots of things that utilise 3D printing, for example, like these guns, or even just paper around the house because they didn't have other resources. Everything ranged from the absolutely supreme, the whole family got involved, kids could make their own cars um, and test them out, and some things were just made for a bit of fun, like this marble roller coaster. Um, so this week's a bit different, but I really enjoyed my time there and I really hope to get involved in other makers fairs because it's the perfect way to showcase technology um, in real life. It's something that everyone can get involved in. For example, to create your own music, whether that's through the power of pedals or through something that's accessible to all. But one of the coolest pieces of technology that I saw from the day was from this company called Pycon Tech. I managed to get an interview with them for the day and then stay tuned until the end of the episode for some very exciting channel news. Okay, so tell me the, your name and your company and tell me a bit about your company. Okay, so uh, my name's Mark Wrigley and I have a company called Electric Tube and my company is um, I guess a, a way of exploring science and lifelong learning. Oh, that's exciting, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so today at the, the Makers Fair you have a 3D printed telescope. Yeah. Uh, that was really interesting, mm. so the, the mirror isn't, it's a mirror aperture, so the light comes in reflects off a, yep. a curved mirror and onto a Raspberry Pi camera. Yeah. And um, but all the components in it are three D printed. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So most most of the components are three D printed. So okay. we we can't print the mirror. No. Um, we've not found out how to print Raspberry Pis yet. <laughs> no. Uh, but um, the other there are a few components like a cog off a three D printer, uh, some screws, and the tube. We we spent spent some time deciding whether or not to print a tube. Okay, so the actual. Uh, so the tube is, is no, the tube is um, a ventilation shaft. Oh, right. Uh, okay. So it's a, an extractor fan ventilation shaft that wow. we, we cut to size. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, so, what kind of resolution can you get? Can right, you yeah. So, the, the. See things on the moon, for example? Yep. Yeah, the, the field of view of the camera is a quarter of a degree. So, the oh. moon is a half a degree at your eye. Great. So, you can see about half the moon at a time. And then uh, we've had some of our, so we've, there are about a hundred plus builds of this project now. Mm. Um, so some of the people who built one send us their results. And we've seen the moons of Jupiter in, in some, and wow. somebody um, from the Cambridge hack space um, just sent me some pictures of Saturn showing Saturn's rings. That's so amazing. quite pleased. In fact, I didn't expect it to do that well. No, so you can actually see the, the different rings. You can see Saturn quite clearly yeah. uh, and rings around Saturn. Wow, yeah. that's really, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. cool. Um, so why did you decide to um, 3D print a, a telescope? Right, so this all started about four years ago and there were a couple of technologies that I found very interesting. Um, one was the Raspberry Pi and the other was 3D printing. And mm. the thing that I found interesting was um, these technologies tend to democratize uh, technology. Mm. Um, they are things that people can buy themselves uh, at home and mm. do things at home. And I'm very much into um, empowering the sort of citizen scientists. So yeah. the Raspberry Pi, 30 pounds computer, and the idea of being able to do computer-aided design and actually manufacture something in your living room yeah. really grabbed me. So, yeah, so at the time, I think it was 
around about £500 for a 3D printer, and of course they're a lot cheaper now. Well, exactly, yeah. And, you know, quite a lot of workplaces have them or anything like yeah. that. So that's great science for everyone. Yeah. I love it. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. All right. So, if you push yourself against the wall, you will feel the wall pushing back to you. All right. It's the third law. Well, we're actually going to use all of them, but it's the third law we're going to use here. Three, two, one. combined art with technology in the most perfect way and I'd love to attend again. But in other news, my channel hit 100 subscribers! Yay! I'm absolutely amazed at the response to this channel so I'm going to carry on making videos but next week I'm going to do a special episode all about kind of my history as a scientist, why I like physics, why maths doesn't suck. So I hope you enjoy that episode next week. In the meantime though, if you want to watch my last week's episode, I'm sure you can click somewhere on the screen Click there to subscribe and um, I'll see you next week. So thank you so much. Bye. Flying this because I but maybe with no problem.